right, so first off, let's you know give an overview. Uh, you are the psychologist for the Ghana Police Force, and uh, when we talk about psychology, uh, if you could give an overview of what this field of study and, and specialty is is like that you are involved with. In a nutshell, psychology is the study of the mind and how it operates. It's the study of why we think what we think and how this is processed through our thoughts and then in our behaviors. So simply put, it's the study of the mind and how it works. The study of the mind and how it works. Awesome. Awesome. Now you are at, actually at the Ghana Police Force. Um, and when we speak about uh, psychology and its uh, its application. You're dealing with, let's say, maybe the junior ranks or the hierarchy or is it for all and sundry? And uh, what does it really entail in terms of what you're doing? So it's for the entire force throughout. Uh, it's not for junior ranks or officers only. Let's just say it's for everybody that is going to need my services sometime or the other. Uh, what it entails is helping individual to cope because of the fact that police men and women are exposed to different situation during their job or within their job and i'm going to give a little example with that for example if you have a rank that's placed in traffic and then there is a robbery at the side of the road somebody witnessing that robbery is not going to run to the station to look for a cid officer they're going to go to that same policeman or woman that's standing there directing traffic now that rank is tasked to engage and to bring resolution and for them will take it to the relevant authorities or to the relevant persons mm -hmm. all right now i know that um one of the things that definitely uh if it is that you know for me you watch uh lots of you know things like you know, some of those um, United States uh, programs that involve uh, police, um, NCIS, law and order, and so yes. on. Yes. And one of the things that is always, you know, uh, evident there is that there is uh, a psychologist on, uh, on the force uh, who sometimes, you know, uh, police rank may might uh, have been involved in a shooting of someone and uh, they say well you know what uh, or that person was in, involved in something that is considered traumatic yes. um, uh, before they are allowed back into regular duty uh, they usually would have to then go to uh, uh, the psychologist in their department um, right. get an assessment and so on and that's that person would now let the, the forces hierarchy determine um, where that person is or if it is that they need help or so. Yes. It's one of the uh, expected out. And because of the fact I'm dealing with persons from all walk of life here in Guyana, I'm exposed to a lot of different things. So I welcome that challenge and I am happy that the force and the ministry decided to take this step into not only looking into the well-being of ranks uh, biologically because I know within the force there's a doctor and there's a nurse but also as their mental health is concerned I rather suspect uh, that because we've got 12 administrative regions um, very soon you're going to be looking at being able to have others um, who yes. um, can uh, be domiciled in each of those regions so that persons uh, could then come to you. But one of the things uh, if I'm to address, uh, when it comes to mental health, as you mentioned, and the whole, the, the whole issue of the mind, the wellness and the well-being of the mind, the funny thing is uh, we are supposed to be well in 
uh, our body, Correct. Uh, well, in our spirit and mind. There seems to be, well, not seems to be, but there is a stigma as it relates to the wellness of the mind. And so when you talk about uh, someone having to see a psychiatrist in the local parlance or in the regular term, a shrink, um, first thing people say, I'm not mad, not me. Yes, so uh, because you do get those kinds of, you know, uh, you know, reaction sometimes so yes so one of the things that i must say because of the fact that mental health in guyana there's a huge stigma as it relates to mental health in guyana like you rightfully said from the time somebody recognized that they need help where this aspect of their life is concerned the first thing they are worried about their colleagues calling them a madman or a mad woman hence they withdraw and keep this inside until this behavior is now um, being forced to come out in a way that is not so productive and what I'm saying it leads to suicide and then we ask ourselves oh this person was educated well off what is the reason right so what we need to do here in Ghana is make this a norm for people to talk about what's bothering them to people to feel okay with not being okay because at some point in your life there's going to be a time that you need to talk to someone you need to vent as we would say and if there's a stigma attached to you saying how you feel and how what whatever is bothering you then what what are we doing so this needs to be a norm and as it really as, as it relates to other persons joining into this unit and, and let us develop a department within the force that deals specifically with mental health is a recommendation that the administrative is actually looking into right now awesome so in terms of uh, that pushback and let me um, deal with it twofold right now um, and for those of you who would have just joined us this is uh, police in you uh, live here on the voice of Ghana's 102.5 uh, FM and we are streaming live on the Ghana police forces Facebook and YouTube pages where you can follow and join a conversation should you have a question uh, for our four psychologists uh, miss Alia court you can post your questions right there I'll definitely see it, and uh, once it's appropriate, we definitely will be asking Miss Court uh, yes. should we have uh, time. But let's deal a little bit um, two part aspect. One, you mentioned uh, somebody might be hesitant or scared to maybe uh, reach out for help. Um, yes. So, what would you say to a police rank who is they need help but they're scared or they're in denial uh, to actually accept some help okay so the first thing i would say is that again it's okay not to be okay at all times and there is no health without mental health and think about it if you don't have mental health how are you going to able be able to think about what's going on in the body what is telling you that I'm sick and I'm not feeling well if you're not well up here? So for ranks that are scared to come out because of the stigma, I'm going to tell you, if you want to be able to live a successful life or at least try, it's okay. You can call me, you can send me an email, you can send me a WhatsApp message, you could send me an SMS. There are so many ways in which you could reach out to me. And as it regards being confidential, if you want to come in or if it's okay with us talking over the phone i'm going to invite you to come in just to sign a form and it's an agreement that both parties sign that we're saying that whatever is discussed within the four walls or in, in other circumstances over a message or a call is strictly confidential all right and, and this information is only allowed to go to the head in which i report to should I find you being a threat to yourself or causing bodily harm to yourself, members of the public or members of your family? Awesome. So uh, confidentiality is a big thing yes, for indeed, anyone is. who is going to be sitting and with you. Correct. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because 
we already are trying to deal with the stigma that's attached to mental health all right and being a policeman or woman there's a stigma attached to police in the whole so can you imagine a police that's that wants to be mentally well and because there's a stigma attached to it he or she did reach out and they're they're going to sessions and because of this stigma and the stigma against the police now the whole in the whole saying you're going to generally say because the public likes to generalize things we like to generalize if if if, a, if an officer or a normal traffic rank is to do something wrong it doesn't go as jim jones or tom jones it goes as guyana police force the entire force so now it's going to be a general thing oh the guyana police force have mad ranks and that in itself says a lot because we as a people in Guyana, we're, we're bringing down the system that have to serve and protect. And that's very, very important. We have a body that has to function day in, day out, no matter the circumstances. Sun, rain, it could be snowing. They are expected to perform a duty. And after a while, if the environment is not conducive for work, if the, the environment at home is not conducive for rest and you're having all of these challenges and it's just in your head, how are you coping? There's going to be a time when you're going to explode. And when that explosion happens, the public is waiting to put this on Facebook. And, you know, as you, you, you mentioned that the public is waiting to put this on Facebook, we've seen uh, so many instances of... Um, uh, Lots of times where, um, if you want to call it um, the shaming of uh, uh, policemen and women um, in the execution of their duties, um, particularly those who are at the front line of the work, uh, on the road or maybe at a police station where a report is made, and the ridicule that actually comes with it, the public ridicule. One of the, the, the things that I, uh, I, I keep hearing from people is that they're policemen or they're policewomen. They've been trained to handle this. They're supposed to be able to take it. Uh, what would you say to those persons? So, I'm not au fait with what training policemen and women go through, but I'm very conscious that they are training that they go through. And, and then they're, let's just say, put out in the public to perform their duties. Now, you as a civilian expect anybody that's wearing blue and black or even cakey or khaki to attend to any situation no matter the state of mind no matter the state physically they're in you expect them to attend to deliver to bring outcome to resolve what are you or what are we as members of the public doing to help this and I'm not saying to be a vigilante and pick up. I'm saying we can play a part by being good spirited citizen. And instead of us trying to bring our police force down, we can help lift them up. You understand? So it's it's not a, it's not a, 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 a a situation where we're fighting against each other there's the police and then there's civilian we're supposed to be working together and one of one of the things that I know we, we as civilian don't understand is that you might see an officer that went off on you and then because of one police you hate the entire police force but little do you know there can they can be a brother or your son or a daughter or niece or nephew that's aspiring to be a police this is an environment that they would have to go in and you wouldn't want a civilian or anybody for that matter to portray the same behavior you did as a civilian to a police who's a family member of yours correct because like the saying go you feel for your own Indeed. And, we should, and we should feel for our own, which is the Ghana police force. Exactly, because if we look at different countries, man, come on, if you go to New York and a police or an immigration rank come up to you and summons you, put your bag, open your bag, challenge that. Tell the officer that, why do, or why do I have to open my bag? Who are you? 
try it. Nobody is going to try it. But you're going to come here in your own country, in your own country. And of course, you're going to do that. There are those who would want to say, well, you know, you have rights and they don't want the invasion of privacy. Or sometimes they want to say that that policeman or woman is uh, uh, actually breaking the law by invading um, uh, their uh, personal right. Hence, they have to push back. Or sometimes we see people who say, well, you know, well, I know the law. Or, you know, you don't know it as, as much as I do. In cases where you know the law and you're summoned to open your bag or a search, let's just look at it from uh, immigration as well. If you know the law, then you would know that this rank is not breaking the law because you're going through an airport. And if there should be any suspicious activity or whatever they're trained to look for, again, these ranks are trained to look for this. How are you going to then say that that's not trained, it's not aware of the process, that you're breaking the law? I am very certain that the trainers, persons that train policemen and women, are not persons that train them to break the law. And sometimes when civilians challenge police in this way, they blow up and they lose composure. So it's, it is important for us to remain in control of the situation. Awesome. You know, when you made mention of, uh, of that, uh, it reminded me of a video that we saw on uh, Facebook. Uh, it would have been, I believe, early in, in the early times of uh, December last year uh, when someone at the airport who was coming in mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they were approached about a search also, a lot of Guyanese, and uh, the way they took off on the, the policeman, um, who, the immigration officer, and it was caught on, on video. And yeah. I think ultimately what happened is that the person was not allowed to be landed, and they were sent back to their country because they didn't re um, fulfill the requirements. I share that to say that sometimes what we find is that is it those outbursts that may come from members of the public uh, that policemen and women face um, due to in many situations maybe because uh, they themselves are on the wrong and so they try to make as much noise and scream you know maybe to uh, deter um, a policeman from carrying out their duty Correct. So they, so persons are aware that if you create a scene, so to speak, it's likely going to be caught on camera, given the era that we live in. Everything is about smartphone and tablet and computer and all of that. So for you to remember that you represent a, a force, okay? So not one man and not one woman can be a force. We need each other to be that force. So that's important. And the funny thing is that specific officer that had that incident, she studied psychology. When I was um, passing out, she was enrolled, I believe. So it's good. And that helped her to be able to keep her I believe it did. Awesome. During your tenure here, without getting given any specifics uh, what kind of uh, maybe examples of uh, or forms of mental and emotional trauma you've had to be able to work through uh, with ranks oh the biggest one is depression and from different stages when i say from different stages it's from work we have some from work because you know let's just talk about the promo the promotion is a a huge thing so you can imagine the amount of anxiety that was built up when that list was not released when it was supposed to so I've dealt with anxiety I've dealt with depression I have dealt with grief when when a person lose a loved one and they're trying to cope and little uh, stuff like how to like I said before how to cope in a, a new environment or in a new situation or in a, even in a new 
so so far that's what i've been dealing with and and the the, the biggest file is depression and where this is coming from it's it's regarding relationship so if you can picture a rank that's dealing with relationship issues and i'm not talking about minor issues and then this rank is a detective and have to come in and perform a duty and then somebody comes in with that with a case that that relates to domestic violence or something to do with the spouse all right imagine the position that that police officer is in to deal with that and it is expected of them to perform that duty now this is going to weigh a lot on what's happening in their mind Performing the duty for those persons that are strong and that can suppress what's happening to them can be easy or would be easy, but for other can't, they're going to break down. Would you say, and I like where this is going, would you say that for, and as you mentioned, let's say uh, uh, that male or female who might be having uh, those personal uh situations at home it then goes into uh, their work uh, relationship where so a member of the public comes and they decide to make a report or a complaint because this is something that that rank is actually going through and they were coping prior to your arrival in silence or what's that okay. they considered well oh, there's nothing to why he's got. So we are complaining about. Okay. Um, would you say maybe, because we've heard people say, you know, lots of times also, um, and I know that's one of the reasons why you, you're uh, with the Ghana Police Force. Oh, men don't like to go to report uh, about domestic abuse or uh, domestic violence because policemen and women laugh at them and tell them they're soft and they need to be with name or if it is it's a woman what happened to you if you get a, a couple of um, we call it is it because of what they've internalized um, in their personal life and that is actually coming out in your work as you're kind of suggesting so yes so your rest is really important sleeping is very important and if you're in a home that you're not able to get at least four hours I would say at least and uh, let me just stress on this at least four hours of rest for you to get up in the morning or perhaps their night shift that some ranks work or for you to get up at 10 o'clock to go out to work and you have not everything is not where it should be you're thinking about not focus on what you have to do and sometimes police men or women are being caught in that situation in which members of the public are challenging them so when if you're in a state like that the possibility of you uh, causing a scene or an outburst in the scale of one to ten one being least likely and ten being very extreme i put it at a, at a nine and in some cases a full ten a full ten mm. <sighs> We're going to get into a little bit about uh, maybe when you sit down um, uh, to deal with some of these things now, how you can work it through um, with uh, uh, these uh, situations. And maybe it could help some of those policemen and women across the country who are in shoe. And it's guess about 21 hours, uh, 33. This is uh, Police and You, live on The Voice of Ghana's 102.5 FM. And we've got uh, with us... Uh, Forces uh, psychologist Miss Alia Court. This is definitely an interesting uh, bit that we're talking about. You mentioned, uh, uh, and you get, I know you just touched over it, or the promotion and the anxiety that many persons yes. were in and so on. But outside of that, I rather suspect, uh, and uh, you did allude to it. Uh, so you've got, you have you had situations where. Uh, there is a rank who is domiciled in one region and uh, they've been transferred to another region um, and because of their trans their rank also they've been transferred them alone so they have to go away from their family how does that affect them and um, 
are they okay. are they when they go to that new environment do they get the kind of support or is there something that you would recommend that should be in place for someone who is now going to be away from their family in a new environment okay so as it regards that um I am aware that persons are aware, are members of the Ghana Police Force, of course, that they are something you call rotation. All right? So in an, in an instance where you have to leave, let's just say, Burpees and go to Essequibo and you're leaving your family behind, it's going to be very difficult <coughs> for that individual to cope if they had, let's just say, 10 years of being with their family. So, in an instance where that is concerned, our recommendation. You're going to get some water for you, don't worry. It's all right. Um, I know how it is. Uh, my apologies about that. Uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, we're going to have our guy go and get uh, uh, a drink of water so you could uh, actually clear your throat. But <clears throat> you're with us here on uh, the program uh, Police and You. And uh, we are having a discussion with the forces uh, psychologists uh, on what really uh, happens uh, since she's been with the Ghana Police Force. And uh, to be able to make sure that those of you who are uh, working in the Ghana Police Force, you can actually, you know, be able to get the kind of help that you need uh, from her uh, at her office, which is uh, located at the Police Force headquarters. I'm going to actually take this time uh, right now um, as uh, Miss Kurt uh, gets back, uh, you know, just gathers her, herself uh, with a drink of water. Um, if it is that you are a policeman or woman, uh, who would like to uh, reach out for a session with uh, Miss Court? Um, you can get her on that would be uh, telephone or WhatsApp or text message on uh, 672 6805. That's 672 6805. Uh, that is uh, the Force of Psy Psychologist, Miss Alia Court. And I know when we do talk about it afterwards, one of the things that I know many of you are going to be wondering about is the confidentiality that she did mention. If you, uh, and I'm sure you would have heard uh, her say before, uh, that unless you as a policeman or woman uh, would have confided anything that is considered to be a danger to yourself or to others, that would then cause her to report higher up, uh, that is to the hierarchy of the Ghana Police Force. Whatever is discussed is usually uh, in confidence and uh, she works it through uh, with the police men and women that she sees on a daily basis. So in terms of the confidentiality of your information staying there, because I know much persons oftentimes like to say, well, I don't want to tell anyone my business. Now we are because if I tell that person my business, it's going to be, go off to someone else or, and so on. But what we are aware of is in the field of psychology, they are guided by a code of ethics, which uh, has to make sure uh, that many persons um, uh, keep that confidentiality as at, at, at the pinnacle of what they're doing and uh, Miss Court so far has been demonstrating uh, that in terms of her work uh, right there at the Ghana Police Force. So do remember, let me just give you uh, that number again. It's 672-6805. Uh, That's 672-6805. Uh, that is uh, Miss Alia Court who is the for psychologists and uh, she uh, can be you can call her directly or you can send a text message or you can actually uh, whatsapp uh, her on that and uh, 
make arrangements to schedule your sessions uh, with her or session or sessions if it is that you do need help reaching out uh, for any assistance as it relates to your mental health and I want to say that kudos uh, uh, to uh, both uh, the, the Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, by extension the Ghana Police Force for the initiative I felt very happy I do recall uh, uh, last year when what happened is that we decided uh, to bring on board uh, the psychologist because it was one of the things that many persons were looking at and saying we've got to if it is that we're looking at the physical uh, well-being of ranks what about uh, the other aspect what about the mental well-being what about the emotional well-being to make them a, a, a well-rounded person and so when uh, the formal introduction was done I was one of the persons who was very happy and there were many other persons who were very happy about what was happening and we've begun to see a whole lot of uh, some of those changes in many ranks as they go on. As we, as we continue, um, I want to just ask you, Ms. Court, now obviously since you've been uh, with uh, the force, we're going to get back into some of uh, what some of those sessions are going to be um, like and so on. But I'm sure to be able to start working on that stigma uh, destruction, I'm sure you've had to be doing a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of uh, lectures, a whole lot of visits to maybe police stations and different divisions. Yes. How has that been? So. What I've started when I start working here, and it was the idea of the administration, of course, is to, I would use the word, sensitize rank as to what the force is trying to bring. All right, so <clears throat> they did not just bring this new system into place or this new department without letting the ranks know or having a first-hand experience. So what we did was we developed five modules of training that we see necessary and that ranks could use uh, in their everyday policing work and also in their home. And such modules are emotional intelligence, which tells you that the emotion of others are very important and in order for you to bring resolution to any situation that's escalated, try putting yourself in that person's shoes. Um, also psychosocial evaluation and that's basic things that you can look for how do you go about doing it and stuff like that um, also there is a module on suicide and it's again it's basic um, if you are performing let's just say general duties in an office and somebody comes in there are things that you can look for there are signs or questions that you can ask just to see if that person is have suicidal tendency, depression, or suicidal thoughts. All right. Um, what else do we have? Emotional intelligence, empathy, and empathy is a really, really, really big one. So because of the fact that most of the time, um, policemen and women use the force, not the, the one that we're together, but the force to get the work done or information from the public, especially if you're dealing with a person, let's just say, that have committed a robbery. But again, you have to get the information to form a case. So if you're going to use that force, I don't see that information being released from that person, from that individual freely. But if you were to empathize and understand how that person felt, well, I understand that this was not what you expected. This is not how it should have went down. But this happened. But tell me, how did it lead up to this? That's a more better approach to get the information that you want. So those are some of the training that police are doing. And so far, we've managed to cover five regions. And for the first quarter of this year, we're going to be continuing that program. Initially, we started with approximately two rank from each region that was selected by the administration 
to do a trainer trainer program in which they're they're trained to go back into the individual regions to train other ranks and they're not going back alone in each region I'm going along with them so in the event of uh, ranks having other question as it relates to psychology and in the case where there is a rank that actually needs to be counselor just need somebody to talk to I'm there so I'm not sending them out or the administration is not sending them out and just okay you train this region and this da 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 da, da. we're actually I'm actually there to see that the training goes through well and if there's additional question that the ranks is not familiar with or does not know how to properly answer that question I take over or they ha pass it on to me so that's what we're doing so far something you mentioned uh, has struck uh, me asking this uh, we tend to in our country uh, and I, I figure you know it's 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 just a general thing with mankind where people seem to feel more comfortable more relaxed uh, speaking to someone who's a stranger yeah. and uh, since you uh, are not a rank and file uh, member of the Ghana police force uh, they come and they speak with you but yeah. to actually speak with one of their police colleagues is a is a struggle because yeah. they feel that that is going to you know and, and it's not just in the police force you have it in other organizations let's even say right here yes. at, uh, at NCN where some I've heard people say um, me and I do HR and tell them my business, guys. Blah, blah, blah. Them Definitely. You, do you know why, Stan? It's because if I'm to relate something that's personal to somebody in an office setting or let's just say in the force or in any organization, you first have to think about who you're going to tell what to. So it all starts again with the evaluation in your mind. And then when it comes down to that one person, and if that person is to, let's just say, give that information out to anybody else, that's where trust is broken. And that's where a person starts to judge you. So why it's easier for you to tell a stranger? Because you don't know me. I am coming to you with this because I need help. You don't know me, so you're not going to put me in a category. You're not going to try to judge me. You don't know my work situation because you're not a part of that ministry or you're not a part of that group or you're not a part of that company. So I can tell you, I can tell you everything that's bothering me because I already made that evaluation and maybe you have some, some recommendations for me, maybe you have some pointers for me, maybe you have some advice that I can actually use. It's going to be very easy for me to talk to you. And because I've already had a bad experience with my work colleague, I'm not going down that road again. So, given given that kind of uh, 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 setback, and the fact that uh, on the air court is one person, mm -hmm. but there are 12 regions uh, that the Ghana police force the manages. Thousands of police. The thousands, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, would you say that there is definitely a need for more um psychologists yes to come is, in yes mr stan there is there is need for counselors there is need for persons to come and work along with the force so this is my theory all right i started studying psychology i cannot remember when and to be honest with you i didn't want to study psychology but the university i, I attended a it was a workshop they had. It was very good. And then you had to leave your email address and it would send to you, send to you um, whatever, whenever they're having other forums that you can attend. And for some reason, an, an email is constantly popping up asking me to join. And I said to my mother, I was like, Mommy, these people, you know, they're sending these emails. Just, just give it a try and, and see. So... When I did my first uh, course in psychology, which is general psychology, and, and it was introduction to psychology was the topic, the first thing our lecturer did was create an environment, and I'm not talking about in your mind, I'm talking about the literal environment in which you feel comfortable t 
talking about what's bothering you to the person next to you. This exercise was done for you to, to vent. Get it out. Because of the fact you're now going to study your mind. Why you think what you think. Why you react how you react. How to control this. What triggers this. How do I cope with this. That was the first session in our class. Alright. So now that you can vent. Now that you can talk about this with somebody that you don't know because it's a new class we're now meeting each other it was so easy for us to say our deepest darkest secret something that's affecting us to the person that's sitting right here would you say that's pretty much how you would actually handle um setting the tone for any session you have in iraq it, it it's it's like i wouldn't compare it to, to raising a child but you first, I first create the environment, as in the office space, and I'm constantly moving stuff around. And it depends on the evaluation that I did, whether over the phone, and it's, it normally starts over the phone because persons would call first. Or sometimes they send a message or email and I would call back. Make an arrangement for them to come in first to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And the first question they're going to ask, are you a police? And my answer, of course, would be, no, I'm not a police. So when they come in, what you try to do with that individual is to build a rapport. So you do not get directly into what, why are you here? How can I help? Simple things like talking about the weather, traffic, what did you have for breakfast, stuff like that, to kind of get that person to relax. And you can actually tell when that person is relaxed by looking at their body language. You know if they're reserved, if they're going to talk. And when you recognize that they're in that place, that they're relaxed, then the question, how can I help you? Because I am here to help. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to be perfect. I am here to help. What I want to do is to leave a legacy. And that is with everything that I know and that I am studying and I am still studying, I want to impart that knowledge in as much persons as I can. I want to help as much people as I can. I'm not taking this knowledge and go to another country and deliver that message there and try to help persons in that country. 592, that's where my focus is. And I'm privileged that the ministry have placed me in the Ghana Police Force. Not that it's as a matter where they need it. They do need it. But it was a very, very important decision to do that. So as it regards getting more persons here, I believe they should create and they're working on that vacancies in that area because the the department is a new one we're still developing it so yes and they are persons out there because they're they're like 30 persons graduate from my batch and then the university of Ghana is doing psychology so yes they're person that study this field that wants to do this that are out there that are just waiting for the vacancy to show up in the news show up in the papers for somebody to tell them about it so they can also render the services so we just saw many persons who uh policemen and women who graduated from the university of Ghana uh just this year and every year it's been happening because one of the things and kudos to those uh, ranks and yes. let me just take the time to say congrats to all those who would have graduated uh this year too uh, but you know for those who would have chosen for whatever reason um, psychology uh, um, as uh, their field they're a policeman or a policewoman but they would have chosen that would you recommend uh, to the force administration that uh, with that kind of qualifications and skill sets now uh, that they can actually you know be dispersed throughout uh, the 12 divisions to be able to assist what you're doing? Absolutely, Mr. Gavai. And why? Because these persons already have a feel. They already have knowledge of what this psychology entails. And for you to build on that, to add training to that, yes, it's definitely going to work. And it's a plus because they are members of the force. So sometimes they are members of the force that do not wish to speak with a civilian. Mm -hmm. So then you have a choice. You can choose to speak with somebody that's actually a member of the Guyana police force that is in that same field. 
that has the same training, that has the same qualifications. Yep. So definitely. Excellent. It's a plus. Yes, definitely. All right. Now, what would make you determine the length or the duration of uh, your sessions with a person? Okay. So that depends on the diagnosis. That depends on what that person is having <laughs> troubles or challenges with. So I'm going to relate this to the, the biological aspect. So like your physiological need, if you're sick, let's just, oh, let's take the coronavirus, for example. You're required to quarantine for, what, 14 days? And then, with, well, they don't have treatment for that, but let's say they have treatment. You're going to be recommended treatment or Panadol or whatever it is. And you have to use it for an amount of time. There is no one magic pill that's going to cure you like this. So it goes on for a amount of time, and again, it depends on what the illness is. So is, if it's just a regular flu, they give you medications for one week, but you have to use that medication in order for you to see result. As it regards the, the matter of the mind, it's the same thing, depending on the diagnosis, because I don't automatically know what's happening with you. I have to talk to you. And just like a doctor would run tests to see what exactly is the problem, to come up with a treatment it's the same thing with the mind all right you form a diagnosis and then you know how to address that and it's not at the top of my head there's actually something called a DSM that has the the mental disorder it has personality disorder and once you form a diagnosis you can then take it to that and see where that falls and then you know exactly what, what this person is suffering from all right so there isn't one strategy strategy that works for everybody there isn't one time span that works for everybody it depends on what that person is struggling with and the diagnosis you form I'm curious uh, would you get more resistance from persons who are sent to you than those persons who actually reach out to you uh, Interesting members, question. Uh, to the body because you, you know, like we often hear people, nothing wrong with me, are you all right? Me sick, me know why they said me here. So there's already a block that they're putting up that you've now got to be able to try to break down. Okay, funny thing out. is, I've had one such individual, and it's not likely. It, <laughs> so I thought. Like you said, when these persons are sent to me, there's going to be an automatic thing that says, oh, I'm good, I don't know why I was sent here. No. When persons are sent to me, they actually want to talk about what's bothering them. They actually want the help. And sometimes I would end the session because this person has made improvement and they want to come back. So it's not, I had one, like I said, one such case where an individual was like, I don't know why I was sent here. And because that individual came with that, it, that rapport was difficult to form with that individual because now you have to remove that statement that something is wrong with you, that's why you're here. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, penultimately, let me just ask you this. Uh, I'm now seeing uh, we just got about uh, uh, three minutes uh, uh, before program time. Uh, but let me just ask you this. Um, we're in this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, it's been running, uh, what, two years, two years. now? Um, and they got some other external factors that ranks they face on a daily basis. Is there any kind of like a, a stress relief routine that you can recommend okay. and that they take uh, uh, for them to follow? And especially even those who are out in the other regions that maybe cannot come to you at the point in time that they would want to come, what they can do and be able to help to share with their coping abilities. Okay, so like I said before, your rest is really important. So you would want to get adequate amount of sleep to perform any duty that you have to perform as a policeman or woman, number one. And something that's very simple and easy to do is something that we call mindfulness. And what is mindfulness? And time to time, 
I would start with my clients with that. But what is mindfulness? It's simple. It's just <clears throat> paying attention and being aware of what's happening right here and right now. Because if you think about it, how often are we stuck in the past? How often are we still in 2017 when something tragic happened? And we're in 2022, but we're, our mind is in 2021. So what you want to do is focus on the now, what's happening now. Because what's happening right now in the present is what's going to determine your future, not what is stuck in the past. And another thing, <clears throat> if there is something or a situation that you can address, find a way to address it. All right? If you cannot do anything about it, if it's out of your control, then there is no there is no amount of stressing <clears throat> there's no amount of overthinking there is no amount of depression anxiety that's going to bring resolution to that problem because it's out of your control and that is what i would say to the any any person any member of the public and when you find a time or you get a number or a way in which you can make contact with me whether it's through a relative or pass a message or send an email, like I rightfully said, I am going to make it my duty, even if I have to go to that region, because I've done that before, and that's really okay. I would go to that region. It doesn't take anything out of me. In less than 60 seconds, tell us uh, your vision for the future of uh, psychology in the Ghana Police Force. My vision is this. I want to create or help to create a department within the Guyana police force in which persons feel comfortable talking about what's affecting them from a day-to-day -day basis. I want to create an environment that ranks feel free like if like it's something that you have to do to talk about your mental health things that you're struggling to cope with. So in the future it would be very 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 good for the administration to develop uh, uh, office each region to address uh, ranks mental issues and also just for them there's sometimes some person just want to vent to get some stuff off their mind and once you you vent it you're good you can go back to doing normal police work you're okay so that would be an important step for them to take and i understand that right now it's new and they're developing that but for the future every region should have an office where persons can feel free to go and talk about what's what's happening to them what they're struggling to cope with and that's the future i want to see all right miss court it has definitely been a pleasure uh speaking with you I want to invite you to come back again because there's so much. We just touched it, uh, the tip of everything. I want to be able to go into detail a little bit more in terms of what you're doing. I know you're a busy person, but do, I want to say thank you for spending some time with us on Police Anime tonight. Thank you for having me, Mr. Dubai. All right, and uh, I want to say a big thank you to all those of you who joined us on uh, Facebook as well as YouTube. Uh, where we've been streaming live. It's been uh, for psychologist Miss Alia Court on the program tonight as we discussed uh, uh, her role in the Ghana Police Force and where it is going to be going. A very big thank you to our cameraman Mr. Wilson from NCN, also to uh, Brown, that's uh, none other than uh, it's yes, uh, Corporal Brown. Last year he was uh, Lance Corporal, this, this year he is Corporal Brown, who is uh, the man in charge of uh, our stream here and our produce production. I am Stan Gavai saying thanks for joining us and do enjoy the rest of your night. We are now going to be making way for Mr. Paul Moore, uh, joining him with the music.